Derbyites, we are but days away from primetime Emmys night. Once again, the high holy day for us Emmy watchers. It's extremely exciting. There's a lot to look forward to. And uh, we've obviously seen the winners from the Cre Creative Arts Emmys weekend extravaganza a few days ago, which starts to help us align where our predictions lie in the um, last minute scramble to try to get our predictions right. I am here with Emmy gurus, Amanda Spears and Riley Chow. Hey. And we thought we would um, talk about the limited series race and uh, just see whether we've made any changes very briefly at the end of our chat in respect of those categories within that genre. So quickly running through the nominees, just in case you weren't quite familiar with who's nominated, and if you're not, what are you doing here? Um, the nominees are The Assassination of Gianni Versace, Genius Picasso, Godless, Patrick Melrose, and The Alienist. Really interesting list. A lot of limited series missed out um, in this category. It's so exciting that we have so many contenders that could have been nominated here. Um, but here we are, we've got these five, and I have actually just changed two days ago. I um, finally gave in to the consensus and have put in Gianni Versace in number one. It seems like a foregone conclusion to me. It's, it did very well last weekend. Not that that necessarily matters, but it helps. I've had Godless in number one for weeks, probably because of um, wishful thinking more than anything else. So, Riley, what about you? Where, where do you stand in the limited series race? Wait, so, Rob, you just changed to Versace. So my question is, what are you doing here? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a good one. That's a, that's a good point. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, Godless really underperformed at the Creative Arts. I mean, it only won main title theme music, which category in which it faced, you know, none of these other contenders. Um, Versace, it didn't do quite as well as the first season of American Crime Story. Like, it didn't take editing, it didn't take sound mixing, it didn't take short form uh, series. And these are all kind of broad-based categories where they're kind of just voting for their favorite as opposed to recognizing an individual achievement like hairstyling. But it still won casting, which we see as the big award. And yeah, more importantly, just none of these other shows picked up much of anything. What about you, Amanda? I, I've been going with Versace from the beginning, but I just, um, I think it did really well. So I actually went ahead and decided to put it in my writing prediction, as my writing prediction, just to play with okay. it a little bit. But I think, you know, it, it won casting, it, it did everything it needed to do to make me feel comfortable keeping it where it, it was, and uh, you know, that director's race, I, 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 I don't know what I'm gonna do there, but mm. I keep yeah, flipping I mean, yeah. back and forth between all of them. I'm, I'm more unsure about that race after the creative arts, just because, yeah, Godless didn't do much of anything. And Godless also wasn't in uh, a lot of these categories, which is the same that can be said for most of these uh, nominees, like the Alienist, um, or Patrick Melrose, we only saw in one category last weekend uh, in casting. But yeah, Godless, it didn't have a chance to, you know, get a vote split win in editing like Black Mirror did, or it wasn't up for sound mixing where we saw a genius surprise. So we didn't learn a ton at the creative arts, um, but I don't think we really needed to anyway. What do you think about directing Riley? Because I'm really starting to think that it, it's Jesus Christ Superstar because they did really well. Like that's the one where like now I'm like, I think Godless is in trouble. Twin Peaks didn't win any of its awards. So I'm, I'm just like, I don't know what to do. I think Twin Peaks is less of a factor than I thought it would be because it mm -hmm. couldn't even you know, get its pocket of support to win uh, in editing where we saw three American Crime Stories nominated. Not that that mattered the last time that American Crime Story competed for editing and they also had three and they still won. Yeah, it seems like the consensus um, is coalescing behind Jesus Christ Superstar directing, um, kind of like the Grease Life win from a few years ago. And that makes sense to me, but I'm sticking with Twin Peaks for the time being because I'm just very stubborn and I just refuse to take it out and if I have to suffer then I will do so. No, just that's not a, that's not very good Emmyology but it is what it is. We've all done it in the past, it's okay. <laughs> now what's yeah. third in the race for best limited series? 
What's third? Yes. So are you think are you saying Godless is second? Is that yes. where you're headed? Okay. Yeah, Godless has so many nominations, and I think that Netflix really put a lot of money into the Godless campaign. So I feel like people have seen it. I don't know if there's passion for it. I'm also a little skeptical if there's even passion for Versace. Yeah. But that's, yeah. That's my view. My, my problem has been that I just don't see the passion for Versace like there was for OJ. And I've been so reluctant to put it in my top spot. And I've even been reluctant to put Darren Chris up there too, to be honest. And I'm about to change that to Benedict Cumberbatch, just Ooh. like um, our fearless leader, Chris Beecham, is doing. Um, but I think that's the way to go. I think it's the way to go. Um, it's going to be like a Mark Ruffalo situation when he was nominated for the normal heart. I, I think probably like Patrick Melrose or Genius Picasso are probably, um, you know, duking it out, obviously, for the third spot because I think the alienist is what, right down the bottom. Do you guys agree? Yeah. Yeah. I... yeah. Yeah. I'm intrigued that Benedict Cumberbatch said he's coming to the Emmys. Now, yes. I don't believe it until he's, he's actually there. <laughs> Yeah. But I, I'm sticking with Darren Chris because I don't see Versace winning without its lead character winning. Yeah. We did see the Alienist pick up supporting visual effects over the Handmaid's Sale and over the Crown. So it, it has, you know, some support. Good point. Uh, yeah. Third place is tricky because Genius, it did pick up a couple of wins at the Creative Arts. Uh, ultimately, I guess I would say Patrick Meller since it's up for writing and directing and those mm -hmm. big categories. But no. yeah, I, I think we could see uh, at the main telecast, like lead actor, um, supporting actress, and uh, supporting actor, or actually, sorry, uh, we could see a lead category, both supporting categories and directing go to either Versace or Godless. Right. You know, because right. Godless, you know, uh, Amanda and I think we have him in directing Scott Frank, and then you could see Michelle Dockery win just because none of those uh, uh, candidates in that category have much support for their programs. And then Jeff Daniels, obviously, Merritt Weaver obviously can win. So you could see Godless take those four categories even without being, you know, in the hunt for a series win anyway. And then you could also see Versace taking a lead category both supporting and directing just because it's theoretically such a strong contender. So it'll yeah, be interesting I... to see how much they split or if somehow we end up in a situation where, you know, neither of them has enough passion and supporting actress is the only category that they take, which I think actually is a possibility. It's, it's really interesting because you've got Godless who could still take a lot of awards on the night. I mean, it's the only nominee in the writing category that's not based on a tv show or a book or it's this he he sat down and wrote this he dreamt up this world so if the writers know that and they appreciate that they might go with th with that now they've usually only gone for one episode they usually don't go for the whole series nominees mm -hmm. but he but then there's the jesus christ superstar of it all and you just don't know <laughs> what that's going to do in some of these categories because i still think brandon victor dixon could win and it, you know if they really really love it it could pick up directing because that's a really hard achievement to direct something live yeah regardless of how long it is and, and i'm with you on the michelle dockery i'm i picked her uh, i think that uh, wow. her, hers has the most support and it's the most viewed. Plus, I think the Netflix factor, uh, this category, her category and Claire Foy's are their best chance of finally picking up that lead acting when they want so badly. That's right. You know, speaking of the women nominated in this genre, I think lead actress is way more competitive than people give it credit for. Um, I know a lot of those nominees are in shows that have not been nominated anywhere else, but they're Emmy darlings like Sarah Paulson, Edie Falco and... Regina King and and even Jessica Biel, um, you know, she was so acclaimed for that performance. Um, Michelle Dockery as well. Um, I don't know if Laura Dern has this in the bag like most people expect. And in fact, I'm probably going to put. I'm not, I'm thinking maybe even Regina King. Uh, I just think because she's really very very well respected at, in the Academy and her performance in Seven Seconds that no one saw was pretty amazing. And so, it, even though they don't like, you know, 
Menendez brothers, they love Edie Falco. Like I don't feel comfortable putting her in sixth place. Like, no. I, I'm sorry. I, I almost feel better putting Sarah Paulson there just because Edie Falco is one of those rare people who's won a lead acting prize on both the comedy and drama side. Now you may be able to, you might want to debate the nurse Jackie win, but she still won under a panel no vote. Money. Yeah. yeah. So if they hate all of those people, they might just go with the person they love. And that's E.D. Falco. Yeah. And also just quickly, it brings me to, uh, to me, it seems so obvious that Merritt Weaver is out front in supporting. I don't see how Penelope Cruz and Judith Light are going to, one of them, the, neither of them have enough support, I think, to take votes away from the other. And I think there's going to be an issue there with, with vote splitting the dreaded vote splitting argument again. But I think Merritt Weaver is actually out in front of the godless and I expect her to win along with Jeff Daniels. She should win. She's the, she's the best part of the series. And she should be, just take a deep breath, know that this is not a surprise. And give us a speech. Yeah, we we loved your I got to go by thanks. But this time, you know, you've earned your 30 seconds. They'll let you speak a minute since you, you know, yeah. didn't speak yeah. 4 or 5 years ago. And guys, are you are you suggesting that USS Callister is not going to be in writing because to me that also seems like a pretty foregone conclusion. Well, uh, no, I, I would never say that. Okay. Good. American Crime Story. <laughs> Did win edited, did win writing, writing the last time it was in competition. And that episode is so amazing. That's their best episode of the season. It makes me sad Cody Fern wasn't nominated. Yeah, I'm still talking about that. Uh, if they, you know, they both do something completely different and you just don't know what they're gonna gravitate towards. And they might remember they voted for Black Mirror last year, so. Well, know. we'll see. Any final thoughts? Because I think these categories, there's a lot of excitement here. They're not, they're not a done deal. Yeah, I'm intrigued by a scenario in which we see Bandit Cumberbatch win for Patrick Melrose, Laura Dern win for The Tale, Brandon Victor Dixon win for Jesus Christ Superstar. You know, either David Lynch or Jesus Christ Superstar wins directing, Black Mirror takes writing. And then, you know, we get to the limited series category and it's like, well, whether it's Godless or American Crime Story, you know, it's kind of a hollow victory. Yeah. But yeah. It'll be interesting if they really spread the wealth or if it's just like the last couple of years where they just double down on the one thing that they like. I think it's going to be a sporadic uh, spreading of the wealth. I think we'll see, like, maybe, got, maybe Versace take one or two, maybe three, but not like... They're probably not gonna win three acting awards, series, writing, like that's, they're probably not gonna see the OJ sweep they did the last time. No. 